In 2023, during the Israel-Palestine conflict, a suborbital missile was launched toward Israel. Israel shot down this missile, but when they did so, it was above the Karman Line, the internationally recognized boundary of space. This was the first ever time combat had taken place in space. But military actions in space go beyond this. Anti-satellite, or ASAT, tests have been conducted by China, Russia, India, and the United States, proving that, should it be needed, these countries have the capability to shoot down each other's satellites in space, and possibly more. While these have just been tests, and not actual combat like the Israeli incident in space, this begs the question, will space ever be the battleground for larger conflicts? First, I should clarify that I'm talking about near-future conflicts in space, things that could happen this century or even a decade or two from today. So I'll be focusing heavily on conflicts based around the Earth-Moon system and the space around it, known as cislunar space, because that's not only the easiest space to colonize and therefore militarize, but it's also the most important area of space in the universe because of its proximity to Earth. So will conflicts here happen anytime soon? So far, it seems possible. While the Outer Space Treaty bans nuclear weapons in space, it does not ban conventional weapons. And the Outer Space Treaty has its own problems, which I won't get into in this video, but I suspect that the OST won't hold any legal weight for much longer, as new space law overrules it. And as countries take new interest in establishing colonies on the Moon and Mars, which I've talked about in other videos, the need to defend them will likely arise. As both the United States and China plan to return humans to the Moon and establish permanent colonies, both countries have taken interest in Shackleton Crater, a crater on the lunar south pole unique for two reasons. One, its potential huge deposits of water ice in the permanently shadowed crater basin, and two, the permanent sunlight on the crater rim, ideal for solar power stations. These two factors make Shackleton and similar craters prime targets for the first lunar colonies. While the OST does prohibit countries from claiming land on the moon, it does not prevent them from building structures on it. It's clear that whoever gets there first will have first pick on where to put their colony, and the resources they can get out of that location. And because the OST will likely be replaced by other space law in the near future, I don't think it's unlikely that debates will arise on what colonies are allowed which resources. China's Chang'e 7 mission, which will likely launch in 2026, plans to make a landing at Shackleton Crater, the first ever mission to do so. The United States' Artemis 3 mission is planned to launch in the same year, but due to multiple problems in the Artemis program, there is a real possibility that China will put people on the moon again before the US. Again, I talk about this more in another video, but China getting to Shackleton Crater and the moon is not something the US government will likely be okay with. Resources and prime real estate for a colony on the lunar south pole are limited, and whatever country gets there first will get first pick on the best, and whether that be China, the US, or a third party, the loser probably won't be happy. This could open up the opportunity for future conflicts on the moon, depending on how outrageous the claims on lunar territory are. I find it hard to believe that conflict on the moon won't happen in the near future. And it won't just be on the moon either. Any colonies built on the moon will have their economies dependent on exporting to Earth, their largest and closest customer base. And there are resources on the moon to export, explained in my How a Moon Colony Would Change Everything video. But to get exported lunar material to Earth, you have to launch it into orbit. So controlling orbit will be just as important, if not more so, than controlling any land on the moon. I don't think we'll have to wait long to see militarized space stations in Earth or lunar orbit, especially because spy satellites and other military-oriented space infrastructure already exist today. And in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if we see our first armed confrontations in space before the year 2040. So, from what I can tell, military conflicts in space are very likely something humanity will have to deal with in the near future. But is it even worth it? Is there not enough space in space for everybody? Shouldn't we be cooperating, not fighting each other? Well, I don't think there's any way to avoid it. It would be better if everyone would cooperate, but unfortunately, pure cooperation might not work. As an example, look at Antarctica. Humans were beginning to colonize Earth's last continent until we signed the Antarctic Treaty, banning the colonization of Antarctica for anything other than scientific purposes. And look what happened. Antarctica, despite being full of resources, has become nothing but a desolate continent with only a few hundred people living on it temporarily. If the same thing happens to space, which it almost has, it will cause irreparable damage to our future and leave us bound to Earth for far longer. Conflict is something that should be avoided, but it's also a necessary part of human advancement. Some of the greatest achievements in technology have come from times of war, making lives better for billions of people. Conflict does drive innovation, for better or worse. At the very least, armed conflicts in space could get world governments to invest more to protect their interests off Earth, expanding the human presence in space in the process. 
So there is a possibility that some good could come out of it. So yes, I think war can and will happen in space, and will happen soon. But while we're doing it, we might as well use the time to build a better future for humanity on the moon and the rest of the worlds of the solar system. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my Colonization of the Solar System series.